power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we soak this meeting. We soak everyone with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are going to ask the Lord to all those who are going to be leading, who is going to be praying, who is going to be teaching, who is going to be like giving a report that God will use them mightily, that he will give them boldness, that they will be able to speak in boldness, that he will give them revelation knowledge, that he will give them understanding, that everything that comes out of their mouth will make an impact, that it will, it will touch almightily, so they begin to lead all those who are going to speak to us. Father, we say in the name of Jesus, we present everyone that is going to teach us tonight, oh God, that is going to pray for us tonight, oh God, that is going to give the report, oh God, Father, that is going to minister to us in the they are going to minister to us in your word, Father. Father, we pray for your mighty boldness, oh God. We pray that you will give them boldness, Jehovah, that they will preach your word, that they will speak your word in authority, that they will teach in power, oh God, that their words will not be misunderstanding, that every word that comes out from the mouth of God, it will be like a lightning and like a fire. Father, you said you're that your word penetrate, your word is sharper than two double edged your soul. Father, as your word begin to be speaking, to us tonight as you're going to use your servant tonight to speak to us oh god father let your word be shepherd oh god let your word pierce our heart oh god let your word pierce our understanding jehovah oh god we pray that whosoever is going to minister to us tonight oh god that you will use them mightily jehovah that they will not speak of themselves jesus but they would speak of you jehovah so that your name in heaven shall be glorified father we say all praises and honor belongs to you oh god Father, we pray for complete boldness, oh God. We pray for understanding, Jehovah. We pray that you will enlighten their understanding, that you will give the revelation knowledge, oh God. Father, we bless you, we exhort you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are going to pray for those who are going to be listening. That the Lord will, will give us this hunger to serve him. That, that, is, that when we listen to his word, that we'll be able to run with it. That we'll be able to share it with our family, share it with, with our loved ones. We'll not just keep ourselves coming every Saturday and harden the word of God. That God give a bonus to run with his word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I we present all those who are going to be listening. All those who are going to be learning. Father, we pray that you will open Open our heart, Jehovah. We pray that you will open our heart to accept your word, O oh God. Father, we pray that your word, your word will not depart from our mouth, O oh God. We pray that your word will not depart from us, Jehovah. Rebo shatita bateka raba shanda. Ika rebo soto ko rebo shatita bateka raba shanda. Ika ba 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 reko soto ko rebo shanda. Ika ba 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 reke sete ke rabo shatita batere. Ika rebo sono rabo shanda. We bless you, Jehovah. We exalt you, Jehovah. We say thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And last night, we are going to be praying. We are going to be praying for the instrument. We are going to be praying for the network. We are going to be praying for the piano that they are going to play, play perfectly. That all those who are going to listen to the music, they are going to be blessed. That would, the way we come in here tonight, we will not go back the same way. That we will be blessed with the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Jesus. we cover this book the of Jesus. you are welcome to take the big ones whatever you are beginning to take yes 
Yes, Lord. Mm, yes, Lord. Pastor Moses. Yeah, Pastor Moses, just continue. I think. Uh, Mami, okay, she's still there. For everyone's life, and uh, Pastor Gladys, I hope your network is stable for to take us through the worship time. Yeah, we are. Okay. Praise God. Yeah, so please take your time. Just uh, relax in the spirit. Let there be a free flow. All right. Yeah, just Sorry, a minute. Brother. Yeah, just a minute. Uh, I'm going to mute uh, everyone's uh, microphone. So that only your microphone will be on, and uh, so also tonight, I want to yeah, just just hold on. Okay. Yeah. So what, welcome everyone, and uh, this meeting is already live streamed on Facebook, and uh, we're going to have a great time in God's presence. And I also want us to flow along with the worship. See, that's one of the responsibility that we have. It's our obligations. Is, is the manifestations of our true love for God. So all what we can give him is our heart in worship. So let's flow because the Bible says the Father seek those who will worship in his spirit and in truth. Right, so let's flow along with them. The Philippines uh, networks may not be so unstable, but let's enjoy it. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's enjoy it. Yeah, so Pastor Gladys, you can unmute your microphone. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, to our beloved uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who is with us tonight, and even those who are viewing with us live, uh, we would like to greet a pleasant evening to everyone. And it's a wonderful opportunity for us that was given a chance to be able to worship our Lord. It's a really a blessing. A blessing for us tonight. So we are going to have uh, the daughter of Pastor Joanna Green to lead to us the worship tonight. And her name is Iris Blessed. So we have Iris Blessed tonight uh, who is going to Amen. Good day to all of us. Amen. Amen. Before we praise, before we proceed to the praise and worship, let's open our Bibles in Psalms chapter 150, verses 1 and 6. Verses 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the permanent of his power. Verse 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Verse 3. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Verse 4. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Verse 5. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And 
the final verse six let everything that has breath praise the lord praise ye the lord amen let's use our hands let's use our feet our mouth our tongue let's use everything that we have to praise the lord amen, amen. are you ready to praise the living god yes. are you ready amen let's praise him in spirit and in truth lord sanctify us with his blood Thank you for the rest Search for 
Christ, the Son of the Living God, our Redeemer. Our Redeemer. Yes, Lord. And we are praising you. give it to him let's give it to god this is wonderful this is so deep philippines thank you thank you pastor gladys and all the philippine team thank you thank you that's a great deep worship amen so we want to welcome everyone uh, to this meeting tonight from africa from asia from latin america from North America, from Europe, and also from Middle East. We really want to thank God for everyone's life. And uh, we're going to go for opening prayer. We're going to go straight to Angola. We're going to go to Angola. We want to invite our own pastor, Pastor Jeremy from Angola, who is going to give us an opening prayer. Yeah, Pastor Jeremy, please, uh, can you unmute your microphone? Yeah, Pastor Jeremiah okay. from uh, Okay. Merci uh, beaucoup, Pastor Thomas. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Thomas. 
pour euh, cette opportunité for this opportunity que vous me donnez aujourd'hui ce matin, you, cet après-midi. Nous allons prier. We are going to pray. Seigneur, notre Père, Lord, our Father, merci de nous avoir donné ton Fils unique. Thank you for giving us your only begotten Son, Jésus qui est le Christ, Jesus, who is the Christ, qui est la réponse pour les problèmes de l'humanité. Who is the answer for the problem of humanity? Merci pour uh, ces moments merveilleux que tu nous donnes. Thank you for this wonderful moment you are giving us. Nous avons besoin, Yahweh, d'écouter ta parole. So we are willing to hear your word. Nous avons besoin d'écouter ton évangile. We are willing to hear your gospel. Que nous puissions nous approfondir à cet évangile. So that we deepen According to this gospel, cet évangile qui est la vie, this gospel that is the life, révèle-nous, Seigneur, ton évangile. Reveal us, Lord, your gospel. Ouvre les yeux de nos cœurs. Open the eyes of your heart. Ouvre nos oreilles, Seigneur. Open our ears. Ouvre notre intelligence. Open our intelligence. En fait, que nous puissions comprendre les écritures. So that we can understand the writings. Que c'est toi. That you. Et toi seul. You are the only. Qui est le Christ. Who is the Christ. Nous voulons nous accrocher à cet évangile. And uh, we want to be near to this gospel. Nous voulons nous accrocher à cette alliance, Seigneur. We want to be near to this covenant. Enfin, que nous puissions à tout moment témoigner que tu es le Christ. So that we can all the time testify that you are the Christ. Nous croyons à ton alliance. We do believe in your covenant. Nous croyons à l'alliance de ton retour. And we do believe in the covenant of your return. Nous croyons à l'alliance de ton retour, Seigneur. We do believe in the covenant of your return. Voilà pourquoi nous témoignons. That's why we testify. Voilà pourquoi nous témoignons. That's why we testify. Parce que nous aimons Yahweh ton retour. Because we love your return. Nous témoignons parce que nous aimons ton avènement. We do believe in your coming, Jesus. Nous avons besoin de rester dans ta présence. We want to be all the time in your presence. Amen. Comme un poisson qui est dans l'eau. Ta parole. Enfin que Yahweh nos âmes soient sauvées. So that our souls be saved. Fais-nous grâce, Seigneur. Do us a grace. Aide-nous, Seigneur. Help us, Lord. À rester ferme. So that we stand firm. À approfondir. And deepen. Sur cette alliance. Through this. Qui confesse que c'est toi qui es le Christ. Au nom de Jésus, nous croyons que cette bonne nouvelle du royaume sera prêché. Il est prêché maintenant. Il est prêché maintenant. Dans toutes les nations, toutes les nations sont en train de recevoir les témoignages. Toutes les nations sont en train de recevoir les témoignages. All the nations are receiving the testimony. Que c'est toi qui es le Christ. That you are the Christ. Le Fils de Dieu. The Son of God. Merci Seigneur. Thank you Lord. Merci Père. Thank you Father. De nous avoir envoyé ton Fils. To send us your Son. Jésus qui est le Christ. Jesus who is the Christ. Au nom de Jésus. In the name of Jesus. Au nom de Jésus. In the name of Jesus. Le Christ. The Christ. Nous avons prié. We pray. Nous avons prié. We pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jeremiah, for that deep gospel-filled prayer. Thank you. Amen. Me. I, can, Amen. I can feel God's presence all over my spirit Amen. in my heart. The whole place atmosphere is charged. Now, before we go into the lecture today, I want us to look at the, this passage in the Bible as the foundation for today's meeting. Yeah, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 and jump to verse uh, 11. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, then I'm going to read verse 11. 
Yeah, I'm reading the T40 version of the Bible. It's called T40 version of the Bible. Say, so now, my fellow believers, I want to remind you about the message about Christ that I preached to you. It is the message that you received and that you have continued to trust firmly. Verse 2, if you keep on firmly believing this message that I preached to you, you will be saved. That is, God will save you. If you do not continue to believe it, your believing in Christ was all for nothing or useless. Now, verse 11, within the verse 3 to verse 10, it talks about the other apostles, Peter and all the other early apostles, and he himself being the latter apostle. He was not even deserved to be called an apostle. That was Paul. But now it says in verse 11, say, for so it does not matter whether it was I who was preaching or whether it was the other apostles who were preaching. We all preach the same message, not a different one. The same message, and that message is what you believed. See? So, and that is what the word of realization is all about, that we all preach the same message. It doesn't matter why it's like, whether it's in Africa, whether in, in Asia, whether in Europe or North America or Latin America or South America or in the Middle East. It does not matter where we find ourselves. The message of the church must be the same. See? And we could see here that Paul emphasizing by the help of the Holy Spirit back to the church that whether he is the one who is preaching this gospel, whether it's the other apostles, we are all preaching the same gospel, not a different one. And that is what binds us together. That's what unites us together. That's the beauty of the gospel of Christ. Amen. So, so this gospel is so precious, it's so great that we be keep on running with this gospel unto the end of our life. And that's what we'll be looking at. And today, we, we, for us to be able to appreciate this, this beauty of the gospel, because if the gospel is not precious to you, if we don't know the value of the gospel, we can't give our life for the gospel for, for it. We can't give our life to go deeper. And that is why the, the, the man of God, the pastor who is going to share the lecture with us today before I invite him, Pastor Luis from Canada, I, I want to say something for us to see that these pastors understood the gospel and the value of the gospel. And he has been able to give himself all, everything, he deprive everything and he give himself to this gospel and he has been running with this word of realizations. See? Now, you remember that was uh, some weeks ago that we invited him to lead us in intercessions, but he couldn't make it. Why? Because uh, his, his uh, wife, they just had a newborn baby and the way they were is not so spacious. So, and also the timing of our meeting as compared to the time of where he lives in Canada is not favorable. So he has to wake up 3 a.m. And, and be with us to share this gospel with us today, 3 a.m. So we can see, I believe that he has been doing overnight, not sleeping, non sleeping. See? So today I want us to really value this gospel. Don't let us see it like a just ordinary meeting. This is the word evangelizations already taking place. God is already doing it. The world, the other nations are being evangelized with this gospel. So if this gospel is not precious, I believe that he needs to be enjoying his own slave with his wife and a new baby. See? But out of his own, out of his comfort zone, he stepped out to inconvenience himself because I see that he, he, he really appreciate the gospel. And today I want us to really give it to the Lord for Pastor Luis. I want us to really give to the Lord. Let's give it to God. Let's give it to God for Pastor Luis. Yeah, we really appreciate you. This time you want to spend with us. We believe that God will allow the revelations of the gospel upon our life in various nations. So, so we represent the whole world at this, at this meeting. So we are the representative of the whole world. So we are like gate to every nation at this moment. And we believe that God's going to speak expressly through you. And people that are the viewers who are watching this through Facebook in every country, God is going to work in their life through this message by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you're welcome, Pastor Luis, as you take us through the message today. We're looking at lecture nine of the lecture 27. Please, you can unmute uh, your microphone. Let me see the one you unmute, just a minute. Okay, you can unmute your microphone now, sir. Oh, 
Hello? Yeah, you're, you're audible. Okay. Hi, everyone. God bless you all. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, you can yeah. go ahead. Okay, start with the lecture. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a true honor and privilege to be able to be here with you all, representatives uh, from so many different nations uh, that are longing for the gospel to be testified through the whole world. Uh, this is uh, this is a great work. Um, it's this, uh, a work that re it requires uh, full commitment if we truly want to fulfill world evangelization. So um, I'm here with uh, fear and tremble because truly um, <clears throat> to be able to testify and to be a witness to share his gospel is, a, is the biggest privilege that we can all have, but also is the biggest responsibility. So uh, may God give us grace. Let's uh, start with prayer. If you can all join me in, let's all bow our heads in reverence to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you. Thank you for this time that you allow us to come together in your holy and precious name. Lord, we're so lacking and we need so much of you, Father. We need you all the time, Lord. Um, this gospel, we know that it's by revelation and it's only by your grace, by your love, by your mercy that we're able to understand what the gospel means. What, what, is it, what does it mean that Jesus is the Christ? And, and to be able to have this faith that you gave to your apostles and this faith that you established from the foundation of the world about the Lamb of God that was crucified from the foundation before the foundation of the earth, that Christ that was going to come, that came, and that is to come again. Lord, please allow us grace, allow us revelation, allow us the mercy of believing your gospel, Lord. We need you, Lord. The world's perishing. The world is suffering, as you know, Father. And we need our eyes to be open so that we may be able to see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ and that we may be able to gain life, truly gain life by the power of your name, be able to fulfill world evangelization so that we can find all of the ones that you gave to the son and that all who sees the son and believes in him may have eternal life. Father, we know that this is your will. This is what you're longing for. And you've called us out of the worst, out of the lowly, to be your witnesses, to testify this gospel, to be able to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that you taught us. And then you said that when we do this, that you would be with us till the end of times. We know that you are at the end and you are about to come, Lord. Please, please, Lord, I, I beg you that today there's none of nothing about me uh, and that my brothers and sisters that are here present that they don't look at the man who's speaking but that, that they see your holy spirit and that it is only your holy spirit please don't let any word of my mouth to come out that doesn't proceed or comes from you father please lord allow me grace allow me mercy so that we can all see more precisely and believe in you jesus as the messiah as the christ as the anointed one of god so we put, put this time in your hands, in your glorious and precious hands. In the name of Jesus, whom is the Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, yeah, so, so uh, sorry, I'm just going to turn this off. Um, okay, so we're going to go lecture, lecture number nine, uh, lecture number nine, separation from God. Can you all hear me well? Yes, yeah. I can hear you. Oh. We okay. can hear you. You are audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, lecture number nine is uh, separation from God. Uh, so separation from God. This is uh, this is the this is the problem of humanity. This is this is something that should truly alert us and and make us understand that uh, what is happening worldwide, all of the issues that we see worldwide, are a consequence of people being separated from God. The world's in a state of emergency. The world's in a state of an emergency. 
And the only answer for humankind, for mankind, is the gospel of the Bible. So we need to please um, allow you, uh, let's allow our hearts and our minds that this word may be able to penetrate as deep as possible so that we may be able to understand how precious and how glorious and how wonderful it is what God has given us and what we have in our hands, which is the only answer, the only way, the only truth, the only life to be able to bring to humankind. This is the only solution. So it's important that we're able to see through scripture, what is that the Bible is speaking and what is it saying to us about who Jesus is and the fulfillment of the work that he did as the Messiah. So we're gonna start in Genesis 2, 7. I believe everybody has their lectures. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So when we look at this uh, verse of the Bible, why, why do we start with this verse in, in this lecture? Um, it's clearly the Bible stating that mankind uh, had the life when, uh, when mankind believed the covenant, when mankind uh, had the Holy Spirit, had the Spirit of God, mankind had no problem. It was, it was in a state of bliss. It was in a state of being blessed. It was in a state of um, all the things that mankind needed was, uh, was done. And it was, it was wonderful. And as you've seen through the, the past lectures, the state of mankind before it fell, it was, it was the way that God planned uh, for mankind to be. And we've all heard probably many times, but you haven't heard the uh, analogy or the, the example of the fish out of the water and the tree out of the ground, understanding that the only way for the fish to be able to be happy and complete and the natural way that it was born to be or created to be, it was to be in the water. You can put a fish in a, in a, in a, in a gold tank with uh, beautiful jewelry and all the food that you want to give it. But if there's no water, the fish will have no life. So when you take out the fish out of the water, then the fish will suffer and then the fish will die. And the same thing with the tree. We have the example of the tree, that the tree out of the ground, it will dry up, it will suffer, it will be uh, calling and in, in, in pain and in agony to get back into the ground so that it may be able to have life. So in the same way, when God formed mankind out of the, the, the dust, out of the ground, out of the clay, when he created us, he created us with that purpose. He breathed the breath of life into mankind nostrils, and that's when mankind had life wasn't only happy, wasn't only all the things that was in the Garden of Eden, all the things that we'd read in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, how wonderful and how beautiful it was. Everything that God created and he gave it to mankind, he says, this is a place that is blessed and is good. And, he, and, and, and this is very good when I created you and I gave you and infused the life inside of you through your nostrils. And mankind was blessed and it was in a state of blessing because the blessing was to be with God. That was the blessing. That was the blessing that mankind had. And that's the only way to have life when humans are created. If we're separated from God, the spirit of God is not inside of us. Then what happens to us? We start suffering. We start agonizing. And then therefore we have death. Not only physical death, but eternal death. And this is the great problem. This is the only problem that humankind has. So it's extremely important that we understand why does it start with Genesis 2, 7? Because it gives us uh, that uh, clear understanding that Genesis 2, 7 stating that mankind needs, must need, it has to be absolutely 100% needs to be with God. That's the purpose why mankind was created, to be unified, to be together, to be with God, to have a life of Emmanuel. And this is not an exaggeration. This is exactly how God pretended, intended, wanted mankind to be, to be with him. So it's important that we understand the severity of this lecture. Because this lecture talks to us about separation from God, which all the problems come 
uh, from this point. Mankind separates himself from God. You've seen the lecture, uh, step, uh, lectures uh, eight and seven. It talks about Satan. It talks about sin. Uh, Satan brings the problem of sin and, and the problem of sin is the one that separates us from God. So Satan is not the one that separates us from God, but it's sin. And we've, uh, as you've seen before, the sin of the world is that you do not believe in me. That's what the Lord says. And that from the ancient times, we see that the covenant was broken because of ignorance, unbelief and disobedience. So therefore, it's important that we understand on point number two, Genesis 3, 8. Um, this is a state of being separated from God. Genesis 3, 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So we see that mankind was created originally to be with God. And with that original state, and now it's hiding away from God, is rejecting God, it's afraid of God. When before that, it was a, a complete, a beautiful relationship that they had the confidence to be before the presence of God. Now mankind separated from God. Now mankind is in this state of hiding away from God. And this is, this is so sad because we see it worldwide how people... Um, we have this condition that we're constantly, people are constantly hiding away from God. They're, they're fearful in the wrong way of God because we understand that we have to be fearful of God. But, but, but when we understand the life of Emmanuel and we understand that confidently we can come in before the presence of God and now the state of mankind because of Satan and because of sin has become separated from God and this separation from God makes people to hide away from God. And not, not, not to long to be wanting to be in the presence of God. And not to long to, to have this relationship, to have this life of Emmanuel, to be with God. Which was the, the, that was the purpose. That was the intention of God. Now mankind is separated from God. And now is hiding away from the Lord. Jeremiah 2.13. This is a very important verse uh, that we should always keep in mind. Jeremiah 2.13. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. So we see nowadays and from ancient times that the Lord has always been merciful and he's been patient and he's, it's called people to repentance. It's called people to get back to him, but people do not want to be with God. They reject God and, 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 and they start creating their own uh, cisterns that trying to hold their own water. Uh, it's because of my wealth that I can be okay. It's because of my knowledge. It's because of my capabilities. It's because my education. It's because of my background or because I, I have a family that may be able to take care of me or, 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 or this and that. And so many things that people think that in their own, they can be okay. And as a, for, for myself, I have the opportunity to be in, in this part of the world where uh, at one point was a, a nation, uh, North America, such as Canada and the United States, was the, the places that I, that I grew up. And I've seen how people had a, a, a knowledge and an understanding and a fear of Christ, but they started to think that uh, because of, you know, the, their success and being able to make money and be, being able to uh, create wealth. And they started to forget about who the, 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 the provider and who the creator was and who is the one that is the living water. The, who's that Christ that is that living water. They forgot about the Christ. They forgot about who Christ is. And they started to uh, live and, and think that everything that they have is because of their capabilities. So humankind for the past uh, 2,000 years, since the fulfillment of the covenant of the cross of Calvary and the crucifixion and the resurrection, when there was a true faith, the primitive church walked with authority and believed and had, it gave everything for the covenant. And they had this passion for the gospel and, and, and they truly understood what it meant. And then about 2,000 years have gone by and sadly, 
the same thing that happened to the people of Israel, the same, the same thing that has happened for the uh, about 2000 years, people have created their own way of living, thinking that they're okay. Maybe God is not that important. Maybe that source of living water is not that important. I got up. I have to get prepared. I, it's, just, it's just my career is so important. It's who I am. It's so important. It's a, uh, people think that it's about ways to get ahead and, and creating things and doing things and, and, and thinking that it comes from, from my knowledge or from my understanding or from my perspective or what I think or what I know when it's not like that. It is not like that. It is not the way that God intended it from the foundation of the earth. He is the source of life. He's the creator of everything. He is the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the one that was, the one that is, and the one that is to come. He is the one that created us. He is the one that created absolutely everything. So away from here, I can do nothing. But here in Jeremiah 2, 3, 13, it's clearly saying that the people of God are constantly doing this. They're staying away from the source of life. They're staying away from the living water. They're staying away from the one that gave everything so that we may be able to truly gain life and to truly be able to uh, uh, understand who's the source of everything. But this is what has happened. This is the state of mankind. They, 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 They have these two sins. They have forsaken the Lord. They have rejected the Lord. They have stayed away from the Lord. They have thought that they, they can create their own little world. And that they're their own God. But we have a creator. We have a God. And then we see the state of North America. I don't know how aware you guys are of what's going on in this part of the world. But it's sad. It's so sad. We have almost a civil war going on in the United States. In Canada, people are so confused. They don't know where they're going or where they're coming. They don't know what's going on. Crisis is hitting. People are committing suicide. And I'm not exaggerating. This is what is happening. People are going crazy. Why? Why is this happening? Because they've forsaken the Lord. And they created and cave their own cisterns. Thinking that away from the Lord, they're going to be okay. That they don't need God. We don't need God. When he is the source of life. Jeremiah 3.20. But like a woman unfaithful to her husband. So you Israel have been unfaithful to me. Declares the Lord. So not only Benkan has created their builder. Or, or, or wanted to uh, crave their, their own sisters with water. But they're also being unfaithful to the Lord. When the Lord is always faithful, he's always good, good all the time. And he's always faithful. And people have forsaken him and been unfaithful to him when he was always faithful. All the way till the end. Like he was to even Judas. That is, he called him friend before he, before he betrayed him. Because he was always faithful. And he didn't fulfill the work of the Messiah. And he was faithful to us. He was faithful to to the work that he promised from Genesis 3.15. That he was going to crush the head of Satan. That he was going to resolve sin. And that he was going to resolve our only problem. And he was faithful and fulfilled the work. But mankind is always wanting to to reject and and be unfaithful to what he fulfilled. The work that he did. What he did for us. Jeremiah 8.5. Why then have these people turned away? Why does Jerusalem always turn away? They cling to the seat. They refuse to return. So we see that in the Old Testament, prophet Jeremiah, known as the weeping prophet, we know that he had this heart, this passion, this this sensitivity to to, to have this pain because he saw the people and he he understood the, the, the problem that they had. And he was saying, get back to God. Get back to God. You're getting away. Get back. Repent. Repent. And we see for about 4,000 years, God anointed kings, priests, and prophets. For what purpose? One purpose. Get back to God. Get back to God. Get back to God. That's the only solution. Get back to the Christ. Get back to the Christ. 
The people of Israel were so stubborn. Their heart was so hardened. They didn't want to get back. God, why? Because they built their own cisterns. They dwell, they had their own water. I'm okay. I don't need God. You don't need God. Really? The source of living water. Prophet Jeremiah said, repent. Believe. Get back to the Holy One of God. Get back to the King. Get, get back to the Lord. So we continue seeing in Isaiah 1 4. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a broad of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. So, Prophet Isaiah, same thing as all the prophets that were anointed, they were prophesying about the Holy One of Israel, they're prophesying about the Christ. They're letting the people, they're letting know the people of Israel about getting back to the Holy One. They're saying, You're evildoers. Why? What's the evil? Not to believe who the Christ is. That Christ, they're saying, get back to the Christ. Get back to the Holy One of Israel. Get back to the one that created you. Get back. Repent. That's what it meant. Repent. Turn around. Get back. Believe on who Christ is. So the prophets are, are, are clearly stating on the state of mankind, separated from God, they're evildoers. Because that's the evil. Not believing who the Christ is. That's evilness. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the whole problem of humanity. That's the only problem of humanity. That's the only problem of humankind. So then we see in Isaiah 48, 8, you have neither heard nor understood from of old your ears have not been opened. Well, do I know how treacherous you are? You were called a rebel from birth. So from birth, we, we were born with this rebellious nature of rejecting God, hiding away from God, despising God, not wanting to get back to God. This is a state of mankind. Why? Because Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ does not shine up on, up on them. So we understand here, that Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, just like it is happening right now, that God is, is, is lifting up people and is calling people to repent us to get back to the gospel, to the, get back to the only way, the only truth, and the only lives of prophets. We're calling to the people of Israel because it was the same issue from the foundation of the world. The same issue that got mankind separated from God. Because of Satan, sin brought the sin of unbelief, not believing who Christ is. And that brought the separation from God. So the prophets are saying, you are a rebel from the beginning. So we have this, this natural state of being rebellious and reject God and not wanting to be with God. And I can dig my own well, cisterns and I can, I can be successful and I, I don't need God. That is the state of mankind and in and, and a level of stupidity. Excuse my language. But that's, that's how mankind, it's the state of mankind. Separation from God is, is not something light. That's the only problem of mankind. That is the only problem of mankind. That is the only problem of mankind. All of the other issues from being separated from God all the pain, all the agony, all the suffering, all that we see in Genesis 3, 4, that mankind had to suffer and had to go through all this pain. And all the agony that we see nowadays come from one problem, one only problem, to be separated from God. And people, the people of God were saying, get back to God, get back to God. 
Repent and believe. That's the first thing that the Lord says. Repent and believe. Believe the gospel. Believe who I am. So separation from God causes, causes all of our problems. We're gonna re, we're gonna we're gonna see it through scripture. Genesis 3 24. <clears throat> After he drove the men out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So this is in essence showing us how how when mankind decided to disobey God and no longer access to life. Why? Because of disobedience, because they're unbelief. They didn't want to believe God. So this is, the, this is what happened. No access to life and, and, and beyond the life that, they, that, that we may be able to experience by the Holy Spirit right now, being able to believe who the Christ is, but the eternal life, they had access to that, to that fruit that gave them, which it was Christ himself, to that tree of life, to that living water, to that spring of living water. That was cut off. There was no access to the tree of life, to that eternal life that humankind was promised from the foundation of the earth when they received the covenant. That we understand that that covenant that they disobeyed. So believing the covenant was their access. Staying whole fast, believing the covenant gave them that access, that immediate access to that eternal life. And now because of their disobedience and their unbelief, we see what happens. No access to the life, to the tree of life, to that eternal life, to Christ himself. No more access to that life. So it's terrible. It's terrible. There, there's not a word that I can find to, 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 to express how terrible this is. Because we're human, humankind didn't only became dead spiritually, but that it, then, he, then he was waiting for a second death. And, and, and most people, like we have a phrase in North America that is called, uh, that is called uh, you know, when people have really no, no success in life, they call them a dead in life. When they talking about success in in a secular level or a or, or a natural level, they call it a dead dead in life. But we see that that really all the people that are separated from God, whether you're the most successful, the richest person in the planet, doesn't matter. You're you're still heading to a dead end life if you're separated from God. So that's why rich people commit suicide. That's why people that have so much wealth and, and they seem so okay, they seem that they're fine, they ended up dying in a, in a, in a critical and horrible circumstances. Why? Because they're separated from God. They're suffering. They're agonizing and they don't understand it. They don't understand what's going on. They think that money can you know, provide for that life. And it's nothing can provide that life. Nothing. Only Christ. Only here. That access to that tree of life was blocked because unbelief and disobedience to the covenant, to the covenant that God gave, that disobedience caused that, that no longer having access to that eternal life. Ephesians 4.18 they have darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. So not, not only they, they, they have no access uh, to, to, that, to that tree of life because of their ignorance and unbelief and disobedience, but now their heart is hardened. It just became a, a, a heart of stone, cold, dried up. Why? Because what they did, what we just read, they forsaken the Lord, the Lord, they rejected the Lord. And that is the consequence. Mankind became with a hard heart, a heart of stone. Jeremiah 17, 13. 
Lord, you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away from you will be written in, in the dust. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. So here again, prophet Jeremiah, is, 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 it's, it's clearly showing us the state of mankind separated from God. That is, that is, that is uh, those who turn away, they will be written in the dust. So from the dust you came to the dust you shall return. So not only agonizing and suffering through their life, thinking that they can fill it with money or with pleasures of this world, but, but they end up in the dust, a second death. And then what? Eternal death. Away from God. How horrible this is. I hope, we, I hope we can understand how emergent this gospel is. I hope we can, we can understand how important is what God has given us. Because people have no hope without Christ. People are lost. People are getting back to dust. People are agonizing. Jeremiah 2.19. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider, consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord, your God, and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Jeremiah 15, 6. You have rejected me, declares the Lord. You keep on backsliding. So I will reach out and destroy you. I am tired of holding back. See how terrible this is. I had the opportunity when uh, the Lord uh, showed me by, by his grace and by his mercy, this, this amazing gospel to, to, to have the need to, to re return to Canada as a Canadian citizen. I um, understood the, that how terrible it was here in North America on how people are so blinded. And, and I, I guess I believe that at one point I was probably thinking the opposite on the way that uh, at one point Abraham thought, you know, Abraham was like, uh, Lord, you know, there must be, you know, are you going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Really? Is that like, can you, you know, can we spare 50, 45, uh, 40? And, 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 you know, I, I was thinking the opposite. I was like, Whoa. when I when I came back to North America, I'm like, like, what's happening here? Like, there, there are really who, who, like, no one wants to believe this gospel because of their heart. It's so hardened. They're unbelief, but the Lord says, no, there are people. There are people to, waiting for this gospel. There are people that need to hear this gospel. And this is true. There are so many people in the world right now. There are billions of people waiting and longing to hear this gospel. But we see here that Prophet Jeremiah is, 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 is declaring the consequence of, 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 the, of rejecting the Lord. Jeremiah 15, 6, you have rejected me, declares the Lord. You keep on backsliding, so I will reach and destroy you. So we got time right now ourselves to repent and believe his gospel and believe who, who the Christ is. Because the Lord is it's about to, to release his anger, his wrath. It's coming to this earth. And it's been prophesied from ancient times. The same thing was prophesied to the people of Israel. And the same thing has been told to us. Get back. Ezekiel 23, 35. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Since you have for, forgotten me and turned your back on me, you must bear the consequence of your lotness and prostitution. So it's so severe, brethren. Prostitution. We, we humankind are just so ter terribly um, rejected and, and completely gotten away from God that to this point, I mean, these are heavy words. This is something that really should make us tremble and make us shake, make us understand, help us understand that, that the state of mankind, it, 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 it's, it's terrible. 
it is terrible. Hosea, uh, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also rejected you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God. Also will ignore your children. So we see how God allowed through his priest to be able to share the life by Given, doing the sacrifices, he anointed those priests so that they continuously be able to uh, redeem people to get back to life and so that they're redeemed from their sins. And we see how God allowed this. And he says, because of your unbelief, because you have forsaken me, you are not able to share the life. You're not able to testify. You're not able to have the life in you so that may, other people may be able to gain life. And that priesthood, that royal priesthood that the Lord gave us to be those priests to not only just by our words say Jesus is the Christ, but to truly have the life, to truly be born of God, to truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, and to be able to carry this life so that people may be able to see the Christ in us, may be able to see that the Christ is in us, and that we will be able to share the life that is, that is carried in us. He is the source of life. And the only way to share that life, the Lord is saying, is by truly believing on what he gave us. And that anointed, true and perfect, anointed high priest. But because of the state of mankind rejecting that high priest, rejecting that king, rejecting that priest that came to resolve Satan's sin and the problem of being separated from God. From the foundation of the world, that's what Adam did. That's what the people of Israel did. That's what we're doing nowadays. If we don't repent and believe who the Christ is. That's why he's saying, get back to me. Because of your lack of knowledge. That's what we're here. Why are we here gathered together? Because we want to know who the Christ is. So that we may be able to believe it. If we don't know it, how are we supposed to believe it? We first need to know who the Christ is, the king, priest, and prophet that defeated Satan, resolved sin, and put me before the presence of God. This is what I need to know. This is what it gives life. This is what helps me to be able to be born of God. And this is what I must believe. This is what I have to ask God. Please, God, I don't want to reject you. I want you as my high priest. I want to believe that you are my high priest that took away my sin and gave me life, infused me life like you did to Adam when you, when you built him, when you created him out of the clay and you breathed the breath of life in him. I want, to, I want to be able to believe this, Lord, because this is what the Lord is saying, because of your lack of knowledge. Psalms 53, 1, 3, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. And their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who see God. Everyone has turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. So here we, we see this is, is so important that we understand. No one. No one can solve the problem. The, the, like we are all born with this problem of being separated from God. And there is only one that resolved the problem. We cannot resolve the problem by our own, own strength. We cannot resolve the problem by our own strategies or knowledge or understanding, but only by the faith that he gave. Certainly we need to understand it, but it's not by the understanding that we're saved. Is by the faith that he established. He is the champion and the fulfiller. The, 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 the fulfillment of the faith, he fulfilled it on the cross. So this is a state of mankind. They're in complete humanity, is in complete agony. And in a state of not understanding who the king of kings is. True and perfect king that crushed the head of Satan. Humanity don't understand, doesn't understand who the true and perfect high priest is, is that resolved the problem of sin, did the atonement of sin eternally, perfect one time and forever, and that he is the source of life. And, and humankind needs to understand. We need to be able to bring this gospel so that people may be able to understand who the true and perfect prophet is that puts us before the presence of God. 
so that we can be with God and be obedient to his covenant. Be obedient what he called us to be. So we're going to see that who is that fulfillment? Jesus is that fulfillment who solves the problem of separation from God is that Christ, that source of life, that living water, that spring of living water, that creator of all, that alpha, that omega, that beginning, that end, is that Jesus, Romans 5, 10, 11. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This is where we need to rejoice. We understand that there's a state of emergency, but are all here gathered together. Now we understand and we see the solution. Now we have this answer to our only problem, to the problem of humanity that God by his mercy and by his grace has brought back as Jeremiah 16, 6 says, stop in the ways and get back to me, source of living water. Get back to me, Romans 5, 10, 11. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So that, that that was blocked, that that abyss, that distance, that separation from God was resolved. Now we can be reconciled to God. Now we can confidently come before the presence of God. Now we can have this life. We can have this true life of being with God and believing who this Christ is that was promised for more than 300 prophecies in the Old Testament, 39 books of the Old Testament, and in and, 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 and 4,000 years that the people of Israel were waiting for the Messiah, were waiting for the Christ. They were so longing for the Christ to come because they knew that that was the solution. That was the solution to Satan's sin and being separated from God. And they were longing, they were craving for it, and they believed, the ones that believed, they gained that life, they had that life, and they had the power of God for some salvation they had the power of god for salvation inside of them inside of them was the power of god they were able to share that life testify that life make disciples of all of, of all nations every day through the temple courts and the houses they did not stop teaching and preaching what that jesus is the christ why because they had that life they were in force they weren't pushed to do it. They had the life. They couldn't stop talking what they had saw, the, what they saw and the, what they, the, the, they heard. They heard and they saw this faith was fulfilled. Jesus made flesh. That source of living water was made flesh to, be, to fulfill the, 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 the only solution that we need. The only solution that we need. The only solution that humankind needs is Jesus, whom is the Christ, because he fulfilled the work of the Messiah. Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Understanding that priesthood comes back, comes back to, to, to truth. I believe who that priest did. What, did. what did he fulfill? Shedding all of his perfect and pure blood. With all that perfect blood that he shed it on the cross of Calvary. He resolved my problems. He did that atonement of sin. Sin being so severe that he can is the only one that can resolve it. He crucified himself. Shed all that blood. Did the atonement of sin. My sin of unbelief. He made it publicly in the worst way that any human can die. In the worst way, being mocked and crucified and, 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 and spit on and, and be mocked and being everything that he went through so that he could resolve that problem of my sin. So he made it publicly so that sin may be pulled away by his perfect and pure blood of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, the sin of unbelief. Believe. He did it. He fulfilled it. He took away the sin. He fulfilled the work. So now I'm reconciled to the Lord. I am born of God because what he fulfilled, 
Colossians 1, 20, 22. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your, in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present, your whole, to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So it took away our guilt. Everything that we just read, that we had, that humankind had, everything that is going on in the world, absolutely everything that we just were able to understand through scripture on the problem of humankind, he resolved on that cross. He fulfilled it on that cross. Defeating Satan, resolving sin so that we can be before God, so that we can have a life of Emmanuel. My problem is resolved. Whether I have money, whether I am broke, it doesn't matter. What matters is I am with God. God is with me. The source of living water. He resolved it. By doing this work, this great work of reconciliation, he reconciles us to himself. John 14, 6, we're about to be done. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's saying, I am the prophet, I am the king, I am the priest. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the prophet, I am the king, I am the priest. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I am the Christ, Jesus when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he said, I am the Christ. Because that's what it means, the anointed one of God. I am that anointed king, priest, and prophet that reconciled you, that defeated Satan, resolved sin, and put you before the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. What else do I need? What else do I need? Is that not enough? This is not an emotional speech, brethren. This is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. It's the only way to have life, to be with God. We got to believe this. We have to believe this, brethren. He reconciled us, defeated Satan, crushed his head. He crushed his head. Satan is defeated. He resolved the problem of sin. And now we're with God. The way, the truth, and the life. The king, the priest, and the prophet. No one comes to the father except through me. So the way that Adam was in the beginning when he was created. The way he was created to be in that life of Emmanuel. In that life with God. It's restored. We can have access to the Father. We can be with the Father. We can be with God. I am with God. Luis is with God. Why? Because I believe who Jesus is. That he's the way, the truth, and the life. The prophet, the king, and the priest. The king, the priest, and the prophet. He is the one, the only, the holy one of Israel. The one that reconciled me to the Father. I am with God. I am with God. What do I need to do? I need to go to all the people that emergently needs this answer. People, the whole world needs this answer. People are crying out. They're in agony. They're like that fish out of the water. They're going like this. They're jumping. They're going like this. They're going like somebody gets me back to the water. And that can only be through the gospel of the Bible. The gospel of the Bible. The gospel that the Lord left us, who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. He's the ultimate solution. He's the only solution. He's the one, the one that reconciles us to God. Let's believe this. God wants us to believe this. If he didn't want us to believe this, he would have not crucified himself on the cross of Calvary. But he did it. All of the signs, all of the wonders, absolutely every breath he took, every step he took, every, every word that he shared, we shared it with one purpose. John 20, 31, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. And by believing, may be able to have life and life by the power of his name. 
What name? Jesus. Who means the Christ? That Jesus. That Jesus. That all the Old Testament talks about. That every single word of God prophesies about. Is the Messiah. Is the Christ. Brethren, it's time to repent. It's time to believe. It is time for us to get back to the one, the Holy One of Israel. It's time for us to believe truly who Jesus is as the anointed one of God, as the Messiah, as the only way, the only truth, and the only life, as the only solution to mankind. Please, let's wake up. Let's wake up. Let's wake up, brother. We need you in North America. We, the whole world needs this gospel, this precious only gospel. That by the grace of God, it's bringing back this clarity. Like if we would have been there in the day of the crucifixion and the resurrection. It's so clear the way we're hearing it. It's so clear, brethren. It's so clear. It's so clear. Like we would have been there in the day of the cross and the resurrection. Because it's so clear. The gospel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, you have allowed us this time in your holy and precious name. Father, we're not here for an emotional speech or an emotional time where we all get excited and, 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 and we look at a man the way he speaks. No, we're not here for that, Lord. We're, we're here because we're truly longing, Father, to be able to understand correctly who you are. In Jesus. Like it was shared on that uh, time of Pentecostal. That first preach of Apostle Peter. Let the whole house of Israel be assured of this. That this Jesus. Who you crucified. God has made Lord. Both Lord. And Christ. Allow us this grace father. To be able to repent. As Apostle Peter said, repent, repent and believe that this Jesus, whom we've been crucifying from our own belief, is that Christ, is that only solution to mankind problem of separation from God. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. Father, allow us, please, this grace, please open our eyes. Please open our understanding so that we may be able to see the light of the glorious gospel of the Christ. Please, Lord, we need you, Father. We need you, Lord. Please allow this grace, allow this mercy so that we may be able to truly, truly gain life. And that we may be able to testify correctly who you are. And that we may be able to make disciples of all nations doing and fulfilling the work that you left us of reconciliation so that humankind can be reconciled to you and our, and our longing, Father, is that this faith of your return may be restored in the whole world, the Maranatha faith, that we may be able to truly understand what it means when you said, I'm coming shortly. When you do this, when you tell people who I am, when you testify, when you, when you do the work that I gave you, which is to make disciples and to find the ones that I gave to the Son, the ones, the worthy ones that are waiting for this gospel to be preached. When this happens, when this comes to pass, when, when the gospel is preached to the last, to the very ends of the world, when these works get when this work gets done, I will be back. So that you might find us find us with faith. The faith that you established from the foundation of the world, of Maranatha faith, Lord, about you coming to this earth to take out the chaos, darkness, and emptiness, 
Please, Lord, allow us this grace, allow us this mercy. Please, Lord, allow us this gospel. Please, Lord, have mercy on us. We come before you in repentance from our unbelief, from our, our ignorance and unbelief and disobedience to your gospel, Father. Please, Lord, allow us mercy and grace. Please, Lord, we need you, Lord. you, Father. Please, Father, help us. Thank you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, whom is the Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Luis. That is life. That is life. Let's quickly go to Delhi, India. For I believe this is time for us to really intercede, to intercede for the, the state of the world, for the state of the church, even for all the disciples all over the world. Let's really pray for ourselves that we might truly believe this gospel. So let's call on the Apostle Lily from Delhi, India, who is going to take us through uh, the intercession time. The Apostle Lily, please, you can unmute your microphone. Thank you. Father God, our hearts are so very filled with awe. Hearing this message, not an emotional message, but a heart full of burden, a heart I pray, Father, that each disciple, not only in Delhi and India, but all over the world, heart may break with this burden. Unless we break, we cannot be full. I pray for an impartation. Even as the man of God brought the word, the disciple of the Lord brought the message today. And every word has come from the heart of the Father. The Father's heart has been revealed today. And who better than the disciple could be chosen of him to whom he relates his burden, how he looks at each dying soul, each dying person without him. And that we as the disciples would catch this revelation that not one perish, not one perish, I pray. And I bring the entire perishing souls of Delhi, of India, and every nation of this world, of this globe. And Father, my heart is so full today. The great passion that you put in our hearts to be increased today. No, that we would not sleep, put our head to the pillow. At least till we don't reach out, even to one each day, to the least. By living this gospel and not just preaching this gospel. May it be full of compassion. When Jesus saw the people, he was moved with compassion. His compassion brought healing to the entire crowd. I pray today that this message coming from this man of God, from this disciple's heart, may flow through us all who heard it and sweep the globe, the entire nation, 
the nation of India that has so many gods, but does not know the, the true living God. Don't you know this God as a, as a God full of compassion, as a father, the God with many breasts, the way to feed every soul. This hour, what's happening under heavens, on this earth, be bound in the name of Jesus and be loosened in the name of Jesus. And all those who are appointed for a day as such, all that were appointed for a time as such, be saved wherever they are. Reach out wherever they are as we come against the spirit of fear of death. Be changed into faith and not fear of Corona, lockdown, COVID, but full of faith today to seek the one true God. For man is born to breathe last, someday or the other. Man is born to die. But no fear of death, but fear to live life everlasting. We come against the entire chaos in the nations that are drawing people to their own reasons, to publicity and filling the news with people who died and went with no destiny eternal. But Father, we come before you with a heart as you brought out the urgency through your disciple this evening to stir up our hearts, to bring tears in our eyes, Lord. Add compassion. That we would not retire to bed without reaching out. I believe there's no power above the power of our Father, of our God. Every other power, every other name, I command to bow down in the name of Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ that brings salvation to entire mankind. That even when we see people through the eyes of compassion, may they see the wanting of God our Father in us wanting them to come into their bosom, into the bosom of the Father and get saved by the finished work of the cross, get saved by his son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Father, I pray at this time in the name of Jesus, unless we disciples don't catch it, the world will not catch it. I pray to all the labor done through Mission World Evangelist that it does not become just one more organization, just one more ministry. But every disciple from the top to the least, from the first to the last in this mission, Matthew 24, 14. No demon in hell, no spirit on earth. Stop this moment. It is not a meeting, but a movement. Every soul be saved. And then the end come. I declare Matthew 24, 14. That we, the kingdomites, living kingdom, purpose that Jesus is the Christ be declared over the globe and India watch me hear me out India I claim you I command you to come into the kingdom of God and be saved 
right from the capital city of India, Delhi. I raise up this flag. Jesus is the Christ. In Jesus name, I pray, I declare, and I call it to be established. Because he said, I will give you nations. And I claim those nations that is appointed to me and I shall not see death till the last soul declares that Jesus is the Christ. I shall not see death. Not only run the race, but run to finish the race. That Jesus is the Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people and the disciples of the Lord say an amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle Lily, for the intercession. Thank you so much. And uh, before we close the meeting, we have an important uh, announcement to pass across to every one of us. So we're going to go to Nigeria, and uh, I will share this. I will share it on the screen. So missionary Joy Akut is going to make the announcement. Please say, uh, uh, missionary Joy, can you unmute your microphone? Good afternoon, everyone uh, from Nigeria. Can you hear me clearly? We can, we can hear you. Yeah, you can unmute your microphone. If... Okay. Okay, you can go ahead. So, okay, so um, I'm so excited and so honored that I get to um, give this announcement for gospel incense. Glory to God. We're going to be worshiping. Uh, your network is also behaving, but we are enjoying it. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Yeah, we can't hear you again. If you can hear me, I understand it's your network. Okay. Okay, I'm going to project so the... Okay, uh -huh. please continue. So we're, we're going to worship him in truth because we're worshiping him from a standpoint of the truth of the gospel that Jesus is the Christ. That is why we worship him and that is the foundation for our worship. I'm going to read Malachi 1. Glory to God. My name is honored by people of other nations. They offer sweet incense of my name. For my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of heaven's armies. We are many nations represented here. And we're going to lift the name of Jesus. And I believe that as we lift the name of Jesus, the whole world that needs this gospel, every nation represented would, you know, the name of Jesus would be lifted and many would run to him. You know, the Bible says that when the saw in, in the book of... Um, Acts, it says that when the council members saw Peter and John, they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training, but they recognized that this man had been with Jesus. As we meet together to worship, to raise an intent of worship, I believe that as we leave, people would see us and know there is something different, that we have been with Jesus, with the Christ, and they would open their hearts to receive what we give them in the name of Jesus. So yeah, it's going Amen. to be a wonderful time. We have um, six, six, um, six gospel worship okay. ministers from- um, Okay, let me, let me project the video, right? Can I yes, project the right. video? Yes, okay. you can, you can. Yeah. Okay, just a minute. Head of the founder and senior pastor of Mission to Nations Ministries. I want to use this opportunity to specially invite you to the Gospel Incense 
expressions. It's a worship experience that unites us together as an audience of one in a blissful, intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ our Lord. It's all happening live on Saturday, the 26th of September, 2020. Here are some of the information you may need should in case you want to log in and from which country you may be logging in from. And also you may need an ID or Zoom ID for you to be able to log in. But straight ahead, let me just give you the Zoom ID for you to be able to log in and participate in this program. Your Zoom ID for the program will be 518-476-6666. That's your Zoom ID number for you to be able to log in and participate in this program to see you participate with us as we have a blissful experience in the presence of God. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let me summarize uh, the what uh, missionary Joy was trying to say is that next week, uh, Saturday, which is September 26, is going to be uh, a moment of gospel in saints expressions time. It's going to be worshiped throughout. So we're going to have, we, it's going to be from beginning to the end. We're going to connect with God through worship. Okay. So we wanted to invite, it has been shared, the flyers have been shared on Facebook and other social media. So you can invite uh, your church members, your leaders, your families, let them be part of this. And through that, we'll be able to understand the true worship. Okay. So it's gonna be so great. So many people will be there from uh, Latin America, from Mexico, from Korea, from Nigeria. Okay. So please, let's make it a date next week. Uh, uh, Saturday is the same time that we have our seminar. So it's this seminar, but we, we're not going to have a time of sharing of the message. The message is going to be, we want to offer our life back unto him in worship, in worship. And if you remember also in uh, Act when uh, uh, Paul and Jail and, and, and uh, uh, anyway, in prison, yeah, you remember the, the song, Bible says they sang and they pray unto the Lord, and there was miraculous thing that happening. But the focus was not about the the chains that were broken. It was not about the earthquake. It was not about the the whole focus was that the worship, their worship led to the word of realization of the city. It led to the word of realizations of a family. So next week, as we're going to have a moment of gospel essence, it's going to lead to the world evangelizations of souls, of family souls, of nations, community, and all our regions. So thank you so much. And uh, before we close, I'm going to call on the missionary Nina, missionary Nina to just acknowledge, I know you cannot mention names, people are many from different countries, but she was going to acknowledge everyone. And we're going to ask uh, Pastor Luis just to give us a benediction and we exchange greetings. Yeah, Ms. Regina, thank you. Um, thank you, Pastor Luis, for making time for us and pouring your heart, sharing your heart with us. Um, I've, I've known him for a few years and I really seen how gospel has really impacting or changing his life and how God has been using his life to save Mexico, Canada and all people, even people he meet through businesses. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen or what is happening to all of us once we truly receive this gospel and let gospel control us, let gospel change us, let gospel influence every aspect of our life, or our traditions. Um, and then very naturally gospel will flow out of us and that's how people will gain life. It's not us doing evangelism it's not us try to change others but rather it's the gospel itself that will save others it's gospel that save that saved us that the gospel that changed us will naturally flow out of us and it will save life it will evangelize god is doing evangelism evangelizing evangelization of the world and by god's grace god has just called us to participate in it and actually we are seeing the evangelization of world today 
um, we have around 60 people gathered here from all different continents. Um, I know many of you, some of you, it's my first time to see you or I've just seen you online only. Hope to see you in person very soon as well. But um, we have people from Africa, Asia, North America, Latin America, um, and Europe and Middle East and very welcome. And I hope after this meeting, um, before we sleep, we'll be able to meditate on the word given today to us. Go through the Bible verses, stand before God, ask God, God, what is it? Talk to me, talk to us. Um, let God speak to our hearts so that it's not some Canadian or Korean or Nigerian speaking to you, persuade you. It's not about us. It's, what, it's all about God and what he wants to tell us through the Bible. So let us really go back to the Bible and study and search and ask God and struggle with it, battle with it, ask God, God, is it really true? Today, Pastor Lewis shared like this, is it really biblical? Let's do this. Let's really stand before God. And in the process of that, I truly believe that God will bless us with his word and more strength and more grace. And we, I'd like to also thank everyone um, for the prayer, um, for your time gathering here. Um, and also thank you, Pastor Thomas, for always um, providing this platform to share the word of God together. So I'd like to invite Pastor Luis again for the closing prayer and benediction. Pastor, you can unmute yourself. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, very much for um, inviting me to, to be a witness of, uh, like uh, Missionary Nina just mentioned, it's not about the person speaking. It's not about ourselves. It's about who, who truly Christ is in Jesus. So that's what we truly need to focus on and, and, and thank the Lord. Uh, for this mercy and this revelation. I mean, there's really not enough words that we can find on how amazing this grace is to be able to believe in Jesus as the Christ. So uh, let's, let's please um, stay together in prayer as we move along and as the Lord shows us uh, truly who he is. And the more the gospel comes alive in us, the more the life is, the gospel is the complete answer to me the more that is, the more I'm, I'm be, I'll be able to testify and, and truly make the disciples that the Lord wants me to make. Um, but it's all about him. It's all about who the Christ is. So thank you very much. Let's close with prayer and, um, and, and have the benedictions. He Heavenly Father, we, uh, <clears throat> we thank you that you've allowed us to come together in your holy and precious name. Uh, people from all over the world, Father, are hearing that by, by a witness of your gospel, the, the gospel that the Bible speaks, that Jesus, that you, Jesus, that you are the Messiah of God, that you are that, that one, the Holy One of Israel, that you are the anointed one of God. Lord, um, uh, more than ever, the whole world, it's, uh, it's crying out for, for your gospel, Father. And we know that you, you know this and you, you hear us, Father, and and we're, we're here gathered together for that only purpose, so that we may be able to get to know you correctly and believe in you correctly, so that we may be able to be uh, true disciples, those disciples that are truly willing to, to bring this gospel, and not to talk about ourselves or our accomplishments or who we are, because we know it's not about us, Father. We know that this gospel is not about us because you already gave everything for us. Absolutely everything. You gave your only begotten son. You gave your only son, Jesus, who is the Christ, so that we may be able to believe it. And now we know that it's, it's not about us anymore because you already did everything for us. But it's about who Jesus is. And if this life truly uh, becomes the life in us. It's the life. And we're reconciled with you. Then we can fulfill the work of reconciliation that you left us, that you commissioned us to do. Father, we, we're we longing, we're begging you, Lord, to please allow us this mercy. Please allow us this, uh, this great privilege 
and great responsibility to be your witnesses and to make disciples and to come together as one body. As you pray, Lord, you pray that we may be one as you and the Father are one so that we may want, be one in the gospel in believing in Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah, as the complete solution to our only problem. We as your bride, as your church, we're here before you humbling ourselves in, in the way that, uh, in, the, in, in the best way that, that you allow us, Father, because we know that the faith is given by you. You're the giver of faith. You're the one that gives the faith, Father. You're the one that gives the revelation. So we're here and we humbly ask you, Father, that you allow us this grace, allows this revelation so that we may, may be able to be pleasant to you, Father. We may be able to please you and we may be able to fulfill world evangelization to be able to do this work together with our hands in our days. So thank you, Father, for the life of everyone here. We bless you and exalt your precious and glorious and holy name. And we pray in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus, who meets the Christ, we've prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much. And uh, upon this note, we want to say that from South Korea, we want to say good night. And uh, for you, from different part of the country in Africa, Asia, okay. Europe, North America, bye, bye, so we love you. Bye, bye. So we are praying for you. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you, Pastor bye. James. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Pastor Bye. 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 Blessed Lord's Day tomorrow. Thank you so much for the day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. We love you. Thank you. We love you. Pastor Did Do Do Do. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Smile. Pastor Joanna. Pastor Moses. Pastor Joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Good night. Good night.